Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Dungeon Bazaar, which is a new game that came out at Essen 2014, which doesn't seem to be getting a lot of heat or notice, which is surprising to me because it's actually from the design trio that produced Zulkin, the Mayan Calendar, which is a hugely popular game. And so those three designers, uh, Paolo... Uh, Cicero, uh Daniel Tessini, and Simon Luciani, I think, got together again. And they put out some other games, but this is their most recent co-designed game. And I gotta say, it's really pretty neat. And I'm gonna try and demonstrate it for you today, showing you some of the neat features of this game. Now, I'm gonna be doing it as a two-player game. And in this game, Jen and I will be rival merchants who are trying to sell all their adventuring goods to adventurers who have traveled far and wide to come and plunder this dungeon that is populated by a mighty dragon. So all the adventurers are coming from all around. They you know, come here to try and win fame and glory. And right outside of the dungeon is all of us trying to sell them all of our stuff. But here's the interesting twist. We are actually crooked merchants who have a backdoor deal with the dragon. We are actually working in cahoots with him. So we sell really kind of crappy, useless merchandise, try to make as much money as we can. Then the adventurers go into the dungeon. They get slaughtered and wiped out. And then in between rounds, we get to run around all over the place in the dungeon trying to scavenge all that busted up equipment so we can bring it back out so we can sell it to the next wave of adventurers. And at the end of the game, whichever merchant makes the most money wins the game. It's pure, um, pure cutthroat capitalism at its finest. I'm going to be doing a run-through today. Now, I've already got the dungeon set up. You've got these nine tiles. You lay them out randomly every time you play. One of the tiles is where the dragon himself is, or herself, I guess. And let's see. There are four rooms that have dragon favor tokens. You can see there's a little marker here to say dragon favors. Now, since, again, we are in cahoots with the dragons, one of the things we can run around in this dungeon when we're scavenging, we can pick up favors with the dra of the dragon that we can use to basically let us move more and do special actions and whatnot. Although, interestingly, one of these four favors is actually the poor lost baby dragon. And if we can find the baby dragon and take it back to Mama Dragon, she will be very, very um, thankful as well. Now, also, there is an accountant down here. Whoever is the first to get to the accountant and talk to him can cook their books, which can get them um, a bunch of extra money, i.e. points, depending on how much favor with the dragon they've got. And at the beginning of the game, each of us has one dragon favor. There's also an ogre over here. If we spend one of our favors of the dragon to call in a favor from him, we can actually use him as we try to lay claim to all the the stuff that's in this dungeon. Also part of random setup, each of the rooms, except for the dragon room, has a random stack of cards. Over here is where all the weapons, the swords and bows and arrows and crossbows are. Over here is where all the potions are. Over here is where the armor is. Here's where the familiars are. Here's where the magic items are. This room has a single spell that will be in the game for the entirety of the game. This game lasts through three seasons, three adventuring seasons, and this will be a spell that we could be racing to try to claim every season. And then also there's another room that has seasonal spells where, well, every season there's going to be a different spell. We never know which one, although we know which one the first one is. And then finally over here is the junk pile, where it's a, it's a random hodgepodge of stuff, a combination of stuff you can find in all the other rooms, but much cheaper, lower cost versions of it. Because all the items that say are in this weapons deck have a value of three to 11 bucks. That's how much we can sell them for. There are also weapons and potions and familiars and armor and all that stuff in the junk deck, but everything in the junk deck is always has a value of one or two. So you can't sell it for as much. But if we do successfully sell the junk to the adventurers, the dragon will be very thankful for getting the junk out of her dungeon, and she will give us extra um, dragon favors on top of whatever money we would make. So that's the big picture. 
And so I've got the game set up. Everything, every time you play, you're going to have a random setup with different locations for everything, different spells that are available, and everybody gets a, you know, a special merchant card, which gives them a special power. Jen's this purple merchant over here, and she has two powers to choose from. She can have an extra goblin assistant. I only get four, but Jen, she's going to take this because she has five goblin assistants. But instead of that, she could have started with extra cash above and beyond what you normally start with if she'd want to. So she could have started with extra points. But Jen took the extra goblin. Me, I am this guy. I have a choice. I'm going to go for this bonus power, which is normally if you collect equipment from the dungeon but then fail to sell it to adventurers, you can recycle it with a local dwarf recycling guild and make two bucks. But me, when I recycle, I get plus one. So I make three bucks. So if I fail to sell, I can make extra money. Now, my other power, instead, I could have been adventurers, sometimes they will want plate armor, sometimes they'll want leather armor. And and so you have to find the right armor in the armor deck. The, if I took this power, for me, I'm such a good salesman, they're interchangeable. I could sell leather armor to a plate, somebody who wants plate. And by the same token, I could sell a sword to somebody who wants a bow and arrow or back and forth. So I'd have a lot more flexibility about what I'm going to sell. But I'm going to go for this one. Because I'm actually a bit worried about the, the yearly spell that came out. This is a spell that's going to be available every round. And this is a spell that whoever wins this, they get a lot of control over what the adventurers will try to buy from us. And so if Jen gets this and prevents adventurers from buying the stuff that I want to sell them, well, at the very least, I'm going to make a little bit more money when I fail to sell. Okay. Also, everybody starts with 20 bucks or 20 points. Somebody's the first player. That'll be me for now. And um, that's uh, basically it. We are set up and ready to go. So let's, oh, well, last bit. First of all, we got to draw one of the cards from the adventure card. And we, now we ignore, this is not an adventure who is coming. We just instead look at the top thing that they wanted. They, this one wanted armor. What we've done is we have just determined where our entrance to the dungeon is going to be. It's going to be by the armor room. Oops, there we go. So. Yeah, this is kind of a magical dungeon. Every season, the entrance could be um, at a different room, and you know it creates a, you know a different madcap rush. And it, you know since it's starting up here, we got to go a long ways to get over to the magic items or to the junk pile or the dungeon. But the armor is right next to right next to where we're, and we're also very very close to the to the dragon and the account, so, you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. In on a future round. We might find that the entrance is over here, and the dragon is farther away, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's see. Now, let's meet our lucky adventurers who are coming to raid the dungeon. First up, we have this Lady Paladin who wants some plate armor, wants a melee weapon, and wants a magic item. And she has 12 bucks to spend. So let's go on ahead and put 12 bucks on her. Three, 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 three. She's got 12 bucks to spend. And who else is coming? Well, in a two-player game, there's only two adventurers. So, hey, and it's a male Paladin. Wow, that's really interesting. Okay. So, he's got 11 bucks to spend. Let's give him his 11. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Right. Okay. So, they're ready to go. And now we can see at a glance what it is these folks are going to want to buy from us. And there's a specific order to them as well. The Lady Paladin, she, first of all, more than anything else, she wants to get some armor. But it has to be plate armor, not leather armor. She doesn't want any of that. Then she wants to buy a sword. Not a bow and arrow, not a crossbow, but a sword. Or, you know, a mace or an axe, you know, a melee weapon. And then finally, she's going to want to get a magic item. And then after she's done shopping, then this guy will show up and he, first First of all, he wants to buy a potion, then he wants some plate armor, and then he wants a ranged weapon. And they both have a certain amount of money. You can see these are both level 1 adventurers. Level 2 and 3 adventurers will have even more money to spend. So, we now have a goal. We know, well, Certainly, there's a high value for armor. Both of these people want to buy armor. Maybe both Jen and I will get a chance to sell armor to them. And then she wants a melee weapon, she, he wants a ranged weapon, she wants a magic item, he wants a magic potion. The potions are way down here, the magic items are way down here, they're both pretty far away. So we'll see how much time we can spend because now the game is ready to go. And the way the game works is, 
everybody on their turn gets to do three actions. And then it's the next player's turn and the next player's turn. Most of the actions you're doing is actually moving from room to room and dropping off your goblin assistants. Because this is kind of an area control game. You know, after um, you know, both Jen and I are done with scavenging through the dungeon, if, say, I had gotten like two of my goblins over here and a goblin over here, and this was the last room I was in, I've actually tried to control this room, this room, and this room. I've got one point of control here, two points of control here, and one, two, three, because I myself count as two, three points of control here. And if on the other hand, say, Jen had two and uh, two and one, then Jen owns this room free and clear. I own this room free and clear. I won this room, so I get first dibs on it because I've got one, two, three influence here and Jen's only got two. And Jen won this room because she's got two influence and I've only got one. So this is a race of running around as fast as we can trying to spread our influence. Okay. And, you know, trying to use our influence in the correct room so we can get the right stuff to sell to these suckers who are about to show up at the end. All right, so now, before we actually start running around, we have to do a quick auction. What's it called? I think it's called paying homage to the, you know, and making an offering to the dragon. Now, where everybody's going to participate in a blind, simultaneous reveal bid, where everybody bids money, and whoever bids the most is the player who gets to go first. And going first is hugely important. Now, all we're doing is finding out who goes first. After that, it's, you know, uh, clockwise order after that. Um, although in a two-player game, obviously, there's only two of us, so whoever goes first is, um, you know, and that's the other player back and forth. So, each of us starts with 20 bucks. We both have to decide how much we want to bid. Let's see. And um, I think I'm going to secretly... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll bid two. I'm going to bid two bucks. You know, so I, I'm holding my fist out, and I'm going to reveal two. And let's see. What is Jen going to bid? You know, so I think she will bid... She will bid two. She also bid two. So both of us are spending the same amount of money. So how do we determine? How do we break this tie? Basically, every one of our merchants has a value. Mine is a value two. Jen's is a value three. That, strictly speaking, means Jen's power is a little bit better than mine. And so, because I have the lower number, the tiebreaker goes to me. So I won. So Jen doesn't pay her two bucks. I, pay, I just lost two points. But I'm the one who gets to go first. I will be the first into the dungeon and I get first dibs on stuff. Okay. Although Jen effectively has two more points than me for the end of the game. Okay. So we are ready to go. Here I am at the entrance, ready to start traveling around. Now remember, on my turn, I get to do three actions. Although if I want during a turn, if I give up my dragon token, I can get two more. So if I give up a, a dragon favor, if I you know, call in a favor from the dragon, I can have five actions instead of three. But let's go on ahead and move in. First of all, my first action, I'm going to move through here and come into this room. That's one action. Action number two, I'm going to go on ahead and get this favor. And now i got to look at it secretly so Jen doesn't know. All right, it's just a favor token. Because remember, I mentioned up front, one of, these, one of these remaining three favor tokens is actually the baby dragon. And if we can find that baby dragon and return it to mama, there will be a big reward for us. All right, so I've done one step, moved into a room. I've done two steps, which is getting the favor. And now I think my third step is I'll drop off one of my goblin assistants. Because, as you recall, both of our adventurers want some armor. So I'm going to want to try to get some, you know, there's, this is a big pile of armor in here, and I'm going to try and get some of it because I'm going to, you know. So that was my turn. Now it is Jen's turn. She gets three actions as well. First of all, she'll go step, that's her first step. Her second and third, eh, what will she do? What will she do? Hmm. You know what? I think her second step is she will just continue south, come into this room, and then her third step is, what is she going to do? Yeah, her third step is she's going to drop off one of her goblin assistants in this room. And so what she is trying to do is take control over this spell. Because remember, this is the spell that gives you control. Whoever has this spell is going to be able to pick one type of item that these adventurers want and basically convince them that they don't want to buy that anymore. So if Jen has control of this spell and I had collected a magic item hoping to sell it, that Jen could then basically hypnotize this paladin to no longer want to buy. So Jen is trying to grab control of this spell. All right, and so now it is my turn again. Once again, I get three actions. Let's see. Now, Jen didn't drop off any 
um, what do you call it, any uh, goblins there. So I, you know, I could, for my first action, I could put another goblin down just to make sure I've got a nice majority in the room. But I think, I think not. I think instead, I am going to go, I'm going to head over, I'm going to visit the dragon. Um, now, to move from one room to another through an open door, like you can see, this room to this room has an open door. It just costs one action. But if there is a closed door, you can see the door from this room to this room is closed. It costs you two actions to get through. One, to open the door, and then two, to get in. So I have moved once, twice. That's a one, two of my actions. And now for my third action, I'm going to make friends with the dragon. And so that's a potential bonus for me. Now let's see. What else am I going to do? Now I could... I have two dragon tokens. I could sacrifice one of these to get two more actions right now, but I'm going to stop right there. I went one, two, three, and my turn is over. Now it is Jen's turn again. Let's see. She is going to go, one, to go through this closed door, to open the door, two, and now she's made into the room, and then um, three, Jen is going to spend her dragon favor that she's got. Now, she has two uses for this. She could, she could use this to get two more actions, but instead, she's going to use this to make good friends with the troll. And now, Jen can take this troll along with one of her goblins and deploy him to any room. And Jen's going to deploy him right back up here. And now what that means is, I have a total influence in this room of one. Jen's got one, two, three. So Jen has won this room, although she did have to pay a, uh, a dragon favor to do it. And she's made it all the way down here. And remember, this guy wants potions. So Jen's all the way down here in the potion room too. Okay, so that was her turn. And so now it's my turn again. All right, for starters, I'm going to go one, two, because remember the door was closed. Actually, probably, probably one of my favorite abilities in the game is this guy. He's got an ability to, um, he knows, he can pay a buck to find secret passages, which means he doesn't have to p take, spend time to open doors. He can just go through doors as if they were open, but he has to spend money instead. That's a really cool power. But anyway, so one, two, and three, and I'm going to try and get this dragon favor, and... It's the baby! Okay, now I don't want anybody to know that because now I've got a secret goal. This does nothing for me unless before we are done, because we're in a race. I, I haven't mentioned this so far. We're in a race to get in here and scavenge as much stuff as we can and get out as fast as possible because the first person to leave the dungeon they get a dollar. They get a free, you know, so they earn a point for being the first one out because the dragon is so up. Get out! She doesn't want us hanging around here. So whoever gets out first gets a buck. And then once somebody has left, everybody else, well, in a two-player game, every, um, the other player who stays behind, they have to start spending money to stay in the dungeon. Now, in a four or five-player game, the first one out makes a buck, and then everybody else has to start paying one buck, one buck. Then once three people are out, the fourth and the fifth player have to pay two bucks. So it can become very expensive to be slow and spend a lot of time in the dungeon. But the longer you spend in the dungeon, the more st stuff you can get done, too. So anyway, so that's the situation. So... Um, I, but anyway, so I, anyway, back to this, I now have to make time to get back to the dragon room before I am done with everything so that I can drop off the baby dragon and get the reward. Otherwise, I will have wasted an action picking the baby dragon up. Okay, because the baby dragon does not actually count as a dragon favor. Alrighty, so now it is Jen's turn again. Let's see, I think for, for starters, she will go... Well, she do... One, two, because she's actually going to leave two of her influence here. No, 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 she'll just leave one. She'll leave one. One, two, she's going to move through this empty door, and then three. Okay, and so she's also got some control. So she's got, she spread her control around quite a bit. All right, so that was Jen's turn. Now, and she doesn't have any dragon favor, so she can't do any more extra actions. Now it is my turn again. All righty. Let's see. Now, I, I only have two goblin assistants left. I could drop one off in here, and that means I would be getting control over that spell. What, which spell is that? Let's see. That spell is Confusion. The player who receives this spell places it over... Oh, is that... Oh, wait. No, no. I'm looking at it wrong. Uh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Oh, it's this one. It's Disappearance. Player receives this in front of her... During face, receive all the coins left on the hero card. Ah, that's interesting. So, once we actually start trying to sell to these heroes... 
yo, this one's got 12 bucks to spend. This one's got 11 bucks to spend. We might not have enough to um, get all their money. And we, we, we might um, not have enough stuff to sell. They might walk away with some cash left over. If I get this spell, I get any leftover cash that they didn't spend. So you know what? I think that's worthwhile. I'm going to drop a goblin here. That's my first action. My second action will be to move down here. And my third action will be to get another dragon favor. Okay. So those are my three actions. Now it's Jen's turn again. She's, got, she's going to go one, through this open door to come up here. Two, to drop off a goblin. And three, she's finally going to get a dragon favor of her own. Okay. And now the interesting thing is, I can see that Jen has dropped off all of her goblins. And it's a pretty safe... I mean, so there's really not much else she could do. Um, because she can't... She might spend more time. She might still move around. She might want to come over here and visit the accountant, for example. But it could be that on her next turn, she is going to leave so she can make the extra buck. So I might now realize I don't have much time left in this dungeon. I myself only have one goblin. If I wanted to, I could say, you know what? I'm not going to do anything this turn. I could spend my entire turn and simply leave the dungeon first. And I could get out before Jen gets out. But if I do that, then I will not have dropped off the baby dragon. So I want to get that done before, before we're done. Let's see here. So, but I know, I'm pretty confident Jen's going to leave next turn. So I basically got three more actions. And then after that, it's going to cost me money to stay. So what are my three actions going to be? Well, I want to drop off my other... Um, so I could go on ahead and drop them off here. But here's the problem. Um, remember, I know that Jen is, has this spell that's going to basically eliminate, eradicate one of the desires of one of these guys. Now, both Jen and I are going to get some armor. Jen's also getting some junk, so she might get all kinds of stuff. Jen's getting a potion, so I know she won't eradicate the potion. She's also getting weapons. See, I'm not really getting very much stuff. And so it may very well be that you know, Jen will use that spell to eradicate the desire to buy the magic ring. So I don't think it's probably worth buying that magic ring. So I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to drop a goblin off. Instead, I am going to go one through the open door, two, three, and I've made it back to the dragon room. And that was it. That, that's my, you know, my actions are over unless I want to use one of my dragon favors to get to do some more stuff. And that's interesting. I could do it. Now, here's another interesting thing. Whoever has the most dragon favors at the end of the game that they haven't used scores five bonus points, and that's a big deal. Whoever has the fewest loses three. So that is an eight-point swing. It's very, very important to not use up all your dragon favors. But I do have to worry. You know, if Jen exits, it's going to cost me money to stay here and drop off my last um, goblin. But if I give up, if I give up one of these guys, I'd get two more actions. I could drop off my goblin and then say, ooh, yeah, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. So I, I went one, two, three. I'm in here. My turn is over. But before my turn is over, I'm going to give up one of my dragon favors. So now I've got two more actions. My first one will be to deliver the baby back to mama. Now, the reward I get for delivering the baby back, first of all, is a favor. So I got my favor back. And then I also get some money. How much money is it? How much money do I get for saving the baby? Oh, I got to look it up. DTT. Um, the baby, baby. A, all right. Three bucks. Yes. So I also just made three bucks or three points. All righty. So that'll be nice at the end of the game. Three more bucks for delivering the baby. And I got my favor back. And so that was, I, that was my fourth action. And now for my fifth action, I will move not into this room, but basically I'll open the door. So I'm now kind of standing in the doorway. Okay. Ah, let's see here. And, hmm. Ah, yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. Okay, so now it's Jen's turn. And see, now Jen could leave. And so she would score the buck. But now there's a bit of a problem. Because I've moved all the way back here, Jen, I have a total influence of one. Jen's got one plus two for the ogre. But my guy counts as two, too. So currently, we're tied for influence in that room. That's really interesting. OK. <laughs> now, what she could do is Jen could spend one more turn and move back in here so that she will be the clear tiebreaker so she gets the clear majority of that room. 
Another thing Jen's got to be worried about is I might come down here and I might take that spell away from her and that could mess her up. Because she just saw I made some money by delivering the baby dragon, so maybe I don't mind spending some money. So that's really cool. What is she going to do? Hmm. Da, da, da. <sighs> okay. Tough decision. <sighs> is she going to leave? See, the interesting thing is, it, when, whenever you leave, your, your model stays, your figure stays in the room. So Jen's basically saying she's got three influence in this room where I don't even have any. So I haven't even tried to get weapons at all. But I still got, I mean, I might stick around and I might go one, two and drop a dungeon. Or, that's another thing. I mean, I could go one, two, drop my last guy off. And, um, hmm, oh my. Right. So does she leave now, or does she stick around a little bit more to... No, I think she's going she's to stick with her plan. She's going to go on ahead and leave. So this is her little... This is her personal marker. She puts it here. She makes one buck for being the first to leave, and she is out. And now she's putting me in a pickle. If I want to keep active, doing stuff in here, i got to start paying money, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to pay two bucks, and so I get another... So I've just lost two points, and I get another turn. So now, first of all, my first action, unfortunately, is going to have to be move into the room, because I hadn't quite made it into the room yet. That was my first action. My second action is dropping off... No, no, no. If I could drop off a second one, Jen will still beat me with three. My second action would be to come down here and... And my third action will be... Oh! My third action could be to come over here, but now Jen's still in the lead, and I need another action to be able to drop my goblin off. Oh! But if I do that, if I spend four bucks, I could have control over this room. But that's really expensive. But I have spent two bucks. I definitely want to do... Now, the one thing... I, there's no reason to come into this room. Although, actually, there is. Oh, I didn't think about that. Let's see. So if I go one... Two, no, no, there's no reason to, well, no. Actually, if I, go, if I drop off a second goblin and I stay in this room, then I've got control, because I've got one, two, three, four, and Jen's only got three, and I have won this room. Yeah, you know what, let's go with that. All right, so that's it. Um, one, two, and now, unfortunately, I actually have one more action I could spend, but, and oh, that's interesting. So I could spend my last action coming here, and then I would get control of that, spell that would prevent stuff from being sold or I can stay in here and I will guaranteed get the best armor. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm wasting an action and so I'm done. And now it's my turn again because Jen's already passed. She's out of the dungeon so I've got one more action and now I will go on ahead and say hey you know what I'm not going to pay any more money I am getting out. Right so we are both out of the dungeon that portion of the game is done. And the area majority now has to be resolved. And so we are now halfway through the first round. Now we've got to divvy up all the loot we found. Then we've got to go sell it to the suckers. And then we start all over again with the second season. But you know what? I mean, I've shown you half. But if you want to see the rest, I think now would be a good time for you to go on and hit the button that's on screen or follow the show notes to go to the extended where I will show you the rest of the game. And you can, you can hit those buttons in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.